All right, stat students. So we are going to have uh, several more lessons to go in this unit. This one is going to be really specific to one idea, one topic. There's going to be a lot of practice in this lesson. Uh, we're going to introduce an, this new idea of conditional probability, and then we're going to do some practice on it. Okay. Um, there have been new worksheets added. You're only going to get two additional on top of the problem set. So make sure that you get on Kidem and look at those. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started into this lesson. Okay, so in your notes, go ahead and draw yourself a line. And uh, right underneath that, you're going to put conditional probability. And then we are going to write our definition down for that. Uh, so that means I'm going to go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint. There it is. So what is conditional probability? And we're going to write this definition here in a second. But um, <clears throat> if if you're having issues with sort of the beginning part of this with the and the or or the just finding probabilities, this takes it a little bit further. So make sure that you reach out to me if you have questions, need a little extra explanation on on these items and uh, and have me go to a little more depth because on just presenting it this way, and that's always been my concern getting to this chapter with distance learning and talking about conditional probability, you may need to go watch a few videos besides my lesson because this is a this can be pretty complicated if uh, if it's new to you or if in general you, you feel like you have a tough time in this class, this might be another one of those topics. But here's what conditional probability is. It's the probability that one event happens given that the other event is already known to have happened. Okay, so that's gonna be the first part of your definition you're gonna write. And then the second part is the probability that the event B has ha happens given that event A has happened. And it's denoted by probability of B. And then you have this little line that's our new symbol that we have, and that stands for given that. So we put this little phonic, or not really phonic, but just way to say it. There's sort of three ways that uh, we've put it in here that uh, that you can talk about it. We have the given that. I like this one a lot, the within. Um, that That's a pretty good way of saying this. So what's the probability that this event happens within this other event happening? And then we have this under the condition that now there's a lot of questions or several questions in your problem set. We'll be looking at one or, or so today that um, that can be answered using conditional probability. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this. I'm going to pause it. All right, so the next thing that we're interested in is the formula. Okay, so we have a formula for conditional probability. And when we start a few of these examples, it may seem unnecessary to have this formula. But sometimes and in some questions, the formula really does um, help out quite a bit. And if you're having trouble, like with some of the questions that are being asked, um, if, if you're having difficulty like conceptually doing it in your head, because a lot of students, and especially me, when I first started learning this stuff, I wanted to try to like figure these out you know, in my head. And in, in just so many ways, you can't really do that in every question that you're going to come across. So this formula is something that you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have it down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that up. Here is the formula for conditional probability. I want you to write all of this. And one of the key aspects to this, if you're an AP student, you don't have to memorize this. This is already in your formula sheet. Let me let me pull up these formula sheets. So for AP students, you have these probability formulas here. These are the ones that, that you guys have. Uh, we've already written down this one here. That should have been in the last video we wrote down. It's the um, general addition rule for mutually or for events that are not mutually exclusive. And then here's the new one right here. This is the uh, conditional probability formula. Now for dual credit students, I'm going to be putting up this uh, formula sheet for you on Kidum, and you can download this and absolutely use it on tests moving forward. But you get all of these rules compared to AP that gets two of them on their sheet. You guys get all of these. However, you do not get 
the conditional probability formula. So for dual credit students, uh, you absolutely uh, need to memorize these formulas. And with enough practice, you can absolutely do that. The um, One of the big things that you need to remember, this little line here that I'm hovering over, in words, and a lot of times that helps with these, you're saying A given that B has occurred, or if you want to say A within B, okay, that's, that's sort of your thought process for these, okay? So we're going to work an example. So we have this example here. I'm going to pause it. I want you to copy down uh, this information. I want you to I'd write E and L, put this example in your notes. We want to have this and then make a simple um, table like this. And then what I want you to do, all, all, you're doing all of this in one pause here. Uh, you're going to try to answer all three of these questions. Okay. The first one you should be fine with. Uh, we've already done that a little bit in this chapter. You can find the probability of event L. Okay. The new one is uh, is this one here, or these two down here. And if you if you feel like you can, we want to make sure that we use these formulas. That would be a good idea for this. Okay. So I'm going to pause it and go ahead and let you get started. Okay, so hopefully you had a little bit of an idea of what to do, especially on the first one. But let's go ahead and talk about this. When you're working problems in this chapter, it's going to be very important to go ahead and total up these two-way tables. So hopefully you were able to do that. You all have calculators that I gave you, and that would be something you'd want to start with. Two-way tables, you always want to have totals. Okay, and that's an advantage that it has against like a Venn diagram. By the way, you would not want to put this into a Venn diagram. Venn diagrams are better for strictly two, it has two variables, but also two events, and it's binary, the event and not that event. So here we have a little bit more going on. So let's see if you got the first part right. What is the probability of L? Well, L is the grade is lower than a B. Here's below a B in this third column. So probability that you got below a B, well, there's 3,600 or 3,656 people below a B out of the 10,000. So this is the probability you should have got. And my preference for these probabilities is going to be um, putting them into decimals more so than percents. That's what I like. Obviously, if you left it as a fraction, it's not incorrect. If you put it into a percent, that's not incorrect either. But a lot of times the answers are going to be decimals. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare you for that. Now we get to the new part. Okay, now, and I don't have, I'm only using my mouse right now. I don't know what happened to my Mobi. I have it here. Otherwise, I'd be using it a lot more. But a lot of these notes today are going to have to be without that. I don't know what's going on with it. I got to talk to Miss Evans and get that fixed. But let's talk about how you could set this up. Okay, we have the formula probability of E given that L. So if I were to write this up, and I'd like you to do this if you haven't already. This is what that formula looks like. E and L over probability on the bottom. What's going to go on the bottom? Well, it's this given event. If you notice that on the last slide, the bottom event is always the one that is the given condition. Okay, so we're going to put probability of L. All right, so maybe you got this one right but I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the answer to it okay 800 out of 3656 so let's talk about why that why that is so we have up top probability of E and L that's the intersection so that's where you see how they've highlighted these blue and yellow this is the probability that both events occur there's 800 so that's why that's gonna go on the top 800 and then on the bottom you have the probability of L well that's what we found up here right we found it to be this but we only really use the top number the denominator for both of these is 10,000 so we actually are gonna get rid of that so it's 3600 and if you think about how I described it within it is the within those that had a grade lower than a B so within this group here how many of them also were engineering and physical science uh, 
that went to the engineering and physical science school. So that's what E is. Grade comes from an EPS course, so engineering and physical science course. So of these 3,656 within that group, 800, their grade came from an EPS class. So that's how you wanna be thinking about these. Let me move my camera up. With that in mind, let's answer the bottom one as well, or hopefully you already have an answer. Maybe you're working ahead or you paused it to try it at this point. If you need to pause me, go ahead and do that, but I'm gonna keep going. Here, we're gonna, I'm gonna use the formula again. It's L and E, there's that intersection, over probability of E, right? And this is in the way. Okay, probability of E. All right, so you'll notice that the top, we have E and L, and L and E, these are commutative, by the way. So the top values are actually gonna be the same. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the answer as well. Uh, so the answer is 50%, maybe you got that, that'd be awesome if you did. Uh, but the probability of E, which is the grade comes from EPS course, remember the given that statement is that it comes from EPS. So it's, now we're sort of flipping this in a way. We're going from, given that we know it's an EPS grade, how many of them are also below you know, below a B average. So that would be over 1600. So 1600 is the group that it's within out of 800. Okay, so that's uh, that's sort of the thinking that you wanna have within this uh, this chapter and for this, this skill. So we're not going to go into a new topic. We're just gonna practice this a little bit more. So we're gonna go into the uh, practice uh, problem set. Okay, so we have uh, number 69 here. This one is a uh, conditional probability. And so I want you guys to understand how to set this up and what, what we need to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause it and give you a chance to, to answer it. I'm gonna move my camera down there. So go ahead, I'm gonna pause it. You guys read the question and, uh, and try to get an answer, A, B, C, D, E. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so go ahead and work this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it. Okay, so in this question, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the answer. The answer on this one should be E. Okay, so were you able to get that? Let's write this up in symbols. Okay, it says if a single student is selected at random and you know that she has a dog, what is the probability that she has a cat? So the first thing you're doing, we already told you this is conditional probability. So let's, we're also gonna talk about how do you identify conditional probability compared to like a normal probability that you're trying to find. Like on, in our PowerPoint, um, we had this one. How did we know that it's not like a basic probability like the first part and how do we know that we're gonna be using this? Cause it's not really saying that directly. Well, what would be the given condition as you're reading this? If a single student is selected at random and you, here it is, you know she has a dog. Okay, so here is how these questions will be worded. Sometimes you have really have to look for it. You're looking for it to tell you, I know that this event has happened or, or um, there's other ways it's phrased. I'm gonna find another example for us to look at, but there's, there's other ways to phrase this to where you know, hey, a condition has been met without saying the words given that. So a lot of times they will say the words given that, okay? But anyway, so we know they have a dog, so I'm gonna put D here for dog. What is the probability they also have a cat? So a C here. Now it's kind of weird how this two-way table is set up. This is kind of, this is not dog, not cat, and then we have dog and cat. So let's use our formula. We know that it's the probability of a cat and a dog, so what's the probability of owning both a cat and a dog? Over the probability of owning a dog. Okay, so cat and dog. So what we do, and we're using this table and this formula to help us out. Where do we find this intersection? Well, it's where the two columns cross, just like we saw in the PowerPoints where they crisscrossed. So we have yes dog, yes cat. Where do those cross? right here with 12. So 12, that's the number of people who have both. 
and that's what we wanted okay now that's the problem because we know that they already own a dog what's the problem they already own a cat so what is the problem they own a dog because that's what goes on the bottom well where is that well here's dog here is the total dog owner so that number is going to go on the bottom so it's cat owners within dog owners that's really what this is saying so cat within dog that's what that is so 12 out of 16 is going to get us this 0 0.75 that we that we want okay next example this is number 64 now number 63 and 65 also go with this but i wanted to just really focus on the question of conditional probability so i'm going to pause this see if you can get the answer to it and uh, and then we'll work through it okay so hopefully you're able to set this up this is a conditional probability statement so how are we identifying that because what's going to happen on the test is you're not going to know that it's a conditional probability you have to be able to read the problem and gain from it the fact that it is a conditional probability so if i hadn't told you that this was conditional probability how would you know that well just like last time we see this you know the person is right like it's telling you up front that something we already know something about an individual uh, if we know the person is left-handed what is the probability they prefer to communicate with friends in person okay so we have our conditional probability what is the given condition well it's that they're left-handed so left-handed i'm going to put l for left-handed all right what is the probability they prefer to communicate with friends in person? So I'm gonna put IP for in person. That's what we're interested in finding given that we know that they are um, left-handed. So using the formula, again, students try to do a lot of this without a formula. Sometimes you will be successful that way, but I'm telling you the formula is going to help so, so much. It. it I don't want to say it takes the thought out of it, but it helps really direct the thought and it's going to make you more accurate with your answers if you use it properly. So we have in person and left handed over the probability of left handed. All right. So where do we find these values on our table? Well, let's do the top first. Put it down here. Up top, we have the we have both events happening. Actually, let's start with the bottom. Let's do the given condition. How many, what is the probability of being left-handed? Well, in this case, based on picking out of this group of 200, we have 34 lefties. So I'm gonna put 34 on the bottom. What is of that group, we wanna know how many of those communicate in person. Really what we're looking for is the intersection of both events, which happens here left and in person. So there's 13. So there's multiple ways you can think about it, but, uh, oh, and my camera's in the way, whoops. There we go, sorry. So we have 34 that goes on the bottom, 13 goes on the top, okay? What does that get us as a decimal? And we'll get the right answer. So it's 13 divided by 34. So you should got 0.382, so D is the correct answer on this one. So. I'm gonna, the lesson's gonna end right there. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. And uh, we're gonna have more examples to practice with, more complicated ones as well. There's a few other conditional probability questions in here. Uh, if I flip through this real quick, I think they say number 47, 48, 49 are conditional probability questions. Uh, but the problem with this is we don't really know, uh, we don't know, what independent really is yet that's gonna be in the next lesson and then number 49 you probably can do that one but you have to set up the sample space so that one's pretty tough um, you can probably you can answer number 47 number 47 you're gonna to need to use the formula for that okay you are going to need to use the formula for that all right um, let's talk about things that are coming up I want to talk about this sheet this one is due uh, this week this is a Venn diagram two-way table sheet. There's three parts to it. It shouldn't take too long, but that's gonna be due the 13th, November 13th. Make sure that you get that done and turned in. And then this one, 
you can start it now. This is a pretty challenging worksheet for conditional probability, okay? You'll find this in Kidum. I wasn't gonna post it until, uh, until the 16th, but let me make sure that's right. Yeah, the 16th is when I was gonna post it, but I've already introduced it to several students, or my face-to-face -face learners, and I wanted to go ahead and give you all a chance to start looking at it. There's not enough practice on the worksheet for conditional probability, so I needed to get you guys more. So this is going to really challenge you with your understanding of conditional probability, and you're gonna be able to work it with it in different ways. My recommendation, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make an example video that's gonna go on Kidum. It'll be a YouTube link of me working number one, number two, and then starting to set up number three. The most challenging questions on here are six and 11. That, that's my opinion. Six and 11 are probably the most challenging ones on here. Not to say the other ones aren't, but those ones are really probably gonna um, stump several people. So if you need extra help with those, or if you really just can't get the answer, if you want me to ever check an answer, send me a message or an email asking me if it's if you got it right or wrong. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure you're showing work. So you'll do your work on a separate sheet of paper, and uh, that'll be what's submitted on Kidum. This is due on the 18th. The problem set, 71 questions, which you need to make sure you're chipping away at, is gonna be due on the 19th. And then we're planning to take our test on the 23rd, 24th. Actually, y'all's are gonna be the 24th. Then you have Thanksgiving, okay? So 24th is gonna be our projected test date for the, this. Um, and the problem sets due the 19th. So that's really what's going on with this class. If you have any questions, please let me know.